So this has been a great year with a lot to reflect on. So for the last day of the year and for the last video of 2022, I wanted to do something different. And I asked dozens of content creators and voices in the watch community on what was their most worn watch throughout the year. We send out invites to dozens of creators and I have a great list of them that are going to be sharing their top pick. The only requirement was that they had to state why they liked that watch and why they picked it so often this year in under 45 seconds. And with that, let's start the clock for myself. So my most worn watch probably was the Blue Dial Omega Constellation Globemaster. I purchased this watch as a way to celebrate reaching 500,000 subscribers earlier in the spring, and it has been a great companion ever since. I've always loved this underrated piece as it infuses two elements that I love, a pie pan dial and a fluted bezel that emulates vintage C case examples. Speaking of that bezel, it is made of tungsten carbide and has a hardness rating of around 2,600 Vickers. For context, stainless steel is around 150 to 200. In addition to this and its versatile, beautiful looks, the 8900 movement is fantastic. The Globemaster was actually the first watch to showcase a Meta certified movement from Omega when it was unveiled in 2015, and its isolated hour hand makes this an overlooked watch for when, well, traveling the globe. Hi everyone, my name is Jenny and I have a YouTube channel called Jenny L on which I talk about all things watch related and my favorite watch, which I have worn the most this year is, oh no surprise here, my candy pink. It is a Rolex Oyster Perpetual in 36 millimeter. I love it so much. It is for me personally the perfect size. It is simple but elegant and it just works so well. Every time I think about maybe wearing something different, most of the time I come back to this one. So yeah, that is it. Thank you so much for including me, Teddy. I hope you're all subscribed already to him. If not, make sure to subscribe to him right now. And I am wishing you all happy holidays and a happy new year. Bye. Three, two, one, go. Hi, Teddy. Merry Christmas, everybody. Hello. I wore my Cartier Santos Carré a hell of a lot this year. Um, I've been looking for one for years, but they're so hard to find in great condition. Ten seconds. And when I found one, I just, I just melted. So that's All it. All over the place like a hot puddle. I am wearing a Zenith Revival Shadow that is timing our deadline for this video. Zenith quickly became my favorite brand and the Revival Shadow in titanium, fully sandblasted, really gets my goat. Although recently someone did say without a bezel, it looks like uh, a watch with no eyebrows. I kind of agree. Yeah. Anyways, Teddy, happy holidays. Thanks for having us on your channel. Ciao. Peace. Well, hi there, Teddy, and Merry Christmas. It's me, your old disembodied pal from Watchfinder. This year, I've been mostly wearing my Tudor Black Bay 58 because I'm boring and predictable. I'm also too cheap to buy more watches. And so, by process of elimination, my most recent watch, the Black Bay 58, has earned the most time in the pleasure of my disembodied company. Just as well, it's one of the best watches on the market, even if Tudor have sneaked up the price. But wait, because I bring glad tidings for the season, I've also started my own YouTube channel where viewers will unfortunately get to see my face doing all of the talking for a change. It's called Andrew Morgan Watches. Thanks and best wishes for the new year. The watch I wore the most this year was definitely my piece unique from Felipe Piccolik, a young German watchmaker from Berlin. So the dial is very special, hand engraved, it features diamonds as the indexes, polished hands with my custom logo as the seconds disc. It also features diamonds on the lugs. Definitely a statement piece, but I love it. Also the case pack is nice. The movement starts off as a unit does, but then it's customized by Felipe himself. So it's frosted and all the bridges are polished. Definitely a watch I love to wear and I can't wait to see what Felipe is gonna create in the future. Hey everyone, John P here. A watch I've just not been able to take off my wrist is the Patek Philippe 5110J, world time yellow gold. Look at the beautiful guilloche on that dial. And of course the cities of the world time are manipulated with the pusher at the 10 o'clock, which serves for me at least as kind of an adult fidget spinner, just kind of push it throughout the day for fun. Now flip over this watch and you see that micro rotor movement. This is where the beauty is. This is where the magic happens. The Coast Agent of decoration, the Geneva seal movement, the anglage, this watch overall just screams classic complicated dress watch. I love it and I think it's underappreciated. Hello, Teddy. Long time listener, first time caller. So thank you so much for having me on. Um, my most worn watch of 2022 has been my Cartier Santos Dumont two-tone in the small size. This is a watch where nothing about it makes sense as a daily wear. It's kind of small. It's a dress watch, 30 meters water resistance. And as a watch geek, this is one of those watches that's in the scandalous realm of quartz. 
yeah this watch is completely overpriced for what it is it, it it has everything that i don't look for in a daily wear kind of watch but for some reason i just love it and i find myself choosing it every day sometimes the heart wants what the heart wants and you can't fight it it makes no sense no sense the small solar powered quartz dress watch was my most worn watch of 2022 this is the cartier tank must solar beat in the large size which ain't that large I like sports watches, mechanical sports watches, big ones, and yet the tank solar beat was on my 7 inch wrist more than any other this past year. Watch collecting is weird because our brains are weird. Well, at least my brain is weird. And something about this tank just worked with my kind of weirdness. One thing I love about the tank is that it's so versatile. It looks equally good with a suit or with jeans and a sweater, which is more than anyone could say for me. Hi there, I'm Federico from Federico Talks Watches on YouTube and DelrayWatch.com. And the watch I haven't been able to take off my wrist this year is my Breguet Marine previous generation on a rubber strap. Absolutely love this. It's the perfect watch for Miami, where I'm from. It fits my style, dressy, yet still on a rubber strap. Beautiful guilloche dial, blue palm style hands, big date, it's 39 millimeters, but wears a little bit bigger. I've loved this watch for over a decade and I managed to snag it a couple of years ago. And while it is in a rotation, this watch is extremely commonly on my wrist and I hate to take it off. Without a doubt, my most worn watch this year and the watch that gets me feeling tingly in all sorts of uncomfortable places is my Audemars Piguet Royal Oak Reference 15 450. This was and still is my girl watch, but that doesn't stop me from wearing the heck out of this thing. It shows a fair amount of wear, but I'd much rather have it on than in some box for safekeeping. When I look back 20, 30, 40 years from now, I don't want to regret not wearing this watch just because I wanted to keep it looking as pristine as possible. Eventually, this watch is going to have as many scratches as there are wrinkles on my face, and I can't wait for that day to come. Not the wrinkles part, I mean the really worn watch part thanks for the invite teddy and i hope everyone has an awesome holiday what watch do you want this year hi teddy my favorite watch of 2022 the watch i worn the most in 2022 is most definitely my royal oak reference number 26331 st the white dial i genuinely believe that this bracelet on this watch is the most beautiful bracelet in the world period and it looks, yeah, 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 I love this. Teddy, keep being you, you're absolutely crushing YouTube, and I always love watching your videos. I wish you an incredible Christmas, and a beautiful, beautiful 2023. Oh, by the way, can we do something cool in 2023, you think? No? Yeah? Hey, my most worn watch this year was my Casio G-Shock. I believe the reference is GWM5610. It's the square face G-Shock, the classic, the iconic watch. Uh, everyone should have one in their collection. I'm currently doing a renovation and that actually does the watch that I'm wearing. I have all my watches packed up, but this is the only one that I wear on my wrist during this renovation. That's why it looks like this. But the good thing about this watch is after I wash it, after I clean it a little bit, it will look almost brand new. And that's the beauty of G-Shock. Now, the reason why this watch is my most worn watch, not only because it's awesome and it's so tough, but also because I wear it when I exercise. Since I exercise probably about four to five times a week, this watch became my most worn watch. It's actually been my most worn watch for a few years running now. Hey Teddy, fun idea, thanks for having me. The watch I've worn the most in 2022 is my IWC Spitfire. So I didn't really understand IWC and why it justified a higher price tier than like a Hamilton or a Longines just from pictures, but once you hold one in the hand, you realize that this is like the pilot's watch in its ultimate form and the fit and finish is superb. The iconic design has hardly changed for half of a century and I've improved mine by fitting the Mark 18 bracelet on it, which itself is a piece of art with quick adjust button built right into the clasp. The Spitfire at 39 is just a nice fit for people like us with wrists more built for lifting, say, cameras rather than stones. And I find the Pilot Watch design highly approachable, and it just ended up being one of those watches I grabbed most when I was leaving the house in a hurry. But 
Happy holidays, everyone. What's going on, Teddy and friends? So the watch I've been wearing most this year is actually one of the least expensive watches I've ever owned. You see, this $41 Casio has a 200 meter water resistance rating, a digital compass, a digital thermometer, an incredible backlight, dual world time, a chronograph setting, alarms, and even a great factory nylon strap. I mean, I gotta say, this is probably one of the best G-Shocks you can buy, and it's not even a G-Shock. What the fuck? Hey, it's Ben here from Ben's Watch Club. I'm gonna cheat here. I've actually got two most worn watches from 2022. The first is this Casio Lineage. It's radio controlled, has world time and other functions. It's housed in a super comfortable titanium case and has a frankly magical dial that doesn't belong on a watch this cheap. It's a great daily driver that's pretty much always on my wrist when I'm not reviewing other stuff. That being said, my Seagull 1963 has also seen a lot of wrist time. The movement is a touch loud, but this 38mm version punches well above its weight in terms of looks and feel. I'll often lob this on for meals or events with a third party strap. Somehow I've not made a video on that one yet. Maybe I should. And maybe you should come and watch it. Teddy, thank you so much for the opportunity to share my watch of the year, the watch that I've worn the most in 2022. It's um, it's a watch that's really close to my heart. It's it, it, you know most people grow up with uh, Baywatch posters on their wall. I grew up with an image of the 1921 from Vacheron Constantin on my wall. Pretty sad, but absolutely true. 40 millimeters, yellow gold, caliber 4400 in the back, hand wound, beautifully finished, penchant to Genève. Um, this real oddball, this this crown here on the corner. Um, this this dial that's been adjusted to the right hand side takes a little bit of getting used to to start with but it's just pure art painted dial blown up Arabic numerals snailing on the sub seconds hand at three o'clock uh, on the dial sorry absolutely not the most obvious choice and the more I wear it the more it gets beaten up and and, and, and people think it's a formal watch to me it's the original tool watch it's one that should be worn with shorts and a t-shirt and, and and you should you should use it to get stuck in with. So it's my watch of the year. I absolutely love it. Um, and Vacheron have been on the march this year. So there we go. Thank you so much, guys. Merry Christmas. Hi, everybody. I'm Tim from Caseback Watches and my watch of choice in this year was the Dubi & Schaldenbrand Diplomatic. It's small and rare. Only 285 pieces out there and this is number 10. The Diplomatic is made of sterling silver, rhodium plated and packed with useful things. Date, second time zone and a 24 hour indicator. Very handy for a YouTuber with friends all around the world. And sometimes when I wear it, I really feel like that diplomat that should have a broad view on things and people. So thank you very much and have a great new year. Hey everyone, AB here with Watch Collecting Strategy, Teddy and your team. Thank you so much for putting this together. The watch I wore the most is the JLC Quantum Lunaire Duometre. This is one of my favorite watches, but also one of my favorite brands. JLC got me into watch collecting about 10 years ago and I've never stopped. The Duometer is a highly complicated watch with a moon phase, a date and one sixth of a second. I don't think I'd ever use that. Flip the watch over, you'll see why it got the nickname the JLC of Longa. German silver, I put it next to my 1815, you'll see it's very similar. And then you have the dual wing concept, one barrel powers the escapement, making this a very accurate watch and a very easy watch to actually wear on a daily basis. Thank you again, Teddy and your team for putting this together. Hi everyone, Bruce here. On my wrist is the most recent pickup, a triple date moon phase chrono from Breitling called the Datora 42. But because it is the newcomer to the watch collection, it is not my most worn watch. That would easily be the Pasha de Cartier Sea Timer. This Gerald Genta design has uncommon elements for a Cartier branded watch. No silver dial, no blue spinal or Roman numerals. Instead, it is a lovely blending of two contrasting forms, the circle and the square, highlighted by bold Art Deco Arabic markers and a large crown cap that protects the small true crown within. This has a trusty 2892 movement, a very solid bracelet, and surprisingly excellent loom. And since adding the Datora, I now have a very fun dynamic between the two. They complement each other well, and I can't get enough of them. Cheers, everyone. Hey, thanks, Teddy. This is Mark from Average Bros YouTube. You guys might recognize my voice from my on the wrist from off the cuff segments, but let's go ahead and find out which watch I wore the most this year and why. 
Not surprisingly, one of my most worn wristwatches this year was actually the most wearable Prospex diver that Seiko has ever released in the SPB317. And although I'm typically more of a bracelet guy, I gotta say you can really dress this thing up, dress it down, or you can even tie in to the vintage military aesthetic very easily. So very quickly, let's go ahead and get some loom shots, low light transition to close this out. If you guys like what you saw, definitely check me out on Instagram or on YouTube for more just like this. Thanks guys. Teddy and his team asked me what was my most worn watch in 2022. I couldn't just pick one. So ladies and gentlemen, my most worn watches of 2022 have been my Tudor Black Bay 58 and my Seiko SPB 143. In my opinion, these two represent each of their brands in a big way. Not only are they both vintage inspired dive watches, but offer a ton of value for money. The Tudor is a lot more elegant with the gilt accents and plays homage to the Tudor Oyster Prince of Mariner Big Crown, which was released in 1958. The Seiko is all business and pays homage to Japan's first dive watch, the 62 Moss, that was released in 1965. Both of these watches will look fantastic in a variety of different straps. Either one of these watches will make for a perfect one watch collection. Stay safe out there and remember to always stay humble. Hey guys, this is a special Christmas video for Teddy Boldasar, and this is from Archie Luxury. Guys, what watch did I enjoy most in 2022? Well, I had my collection pinched. It was nicked, robbed, absolutely lost it, except I took one of my favorite watches to America, my Rolex, Rolex Explorer two polar and i gotta tell you this watch here the thing i love about this watch it is just so versatile this is the watch which it's just so damn cool it's such a beauty to travel with different time zones uh, it's so easy to adjust because it's got the independently adjustable hour hand one of my favorite pieces in 2022 and i gotta tell you i love you teddy boulder star i love your content i love your videos i am a true fan of teddy boulder star one of the greatest watch channels in existence i love you teddy mary Christmas, Teddy Baldassar. All right, guys, that's all we have for this video. Thank you again for all of you that have watched this and any other video throughout 2022. I'd certainly recommend checking out all of these amazing channels as well. Links will be in the description down below. But guys, thank you again so much for watching. Be well, and I'll see you all very soon.